pitchers dial in on upper body mechanics in this game we call Kneel of Fortune. Grab some space in the outfield. The first pitcher steps up with the ball as you or another player sets up about 40 feet away as catcher. They kneel down, keeping their knee in line with their foot. Their front toe and chin should point in the same direction as they hold the ball and their glove hand towards the center of their body. Here's how it looks. When they're ready, the pitcher separates their arms into a T position before bringing their arm up and over, launching the ball in your direction. They should finish with their throwing arm outside their knee and their head down. After 10 pitches, the next player in line rotates in. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff. So have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. Players may feel awkward using only the top half of their body, but remind them, Committing to torso rotation in practice leads to even more velocity in the actual game. Pitchers practice steadying their delivery in this game we call Balance Beam. Place three cones in a row on the pitcher's mound, starting at the edge of the rubber and extending towards home. The first pitcher in line climbs the mound with a baseball. You set it behind the plate as the catcher. Here's how it looks. On your call, the pitcher begins going through their windup by lifting their leg, but before throwing, they lower their foot and tap each of the three cones. Then they take their full stride and deliver the ball to home. After five throws, the next pitcher rotates in. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff. So have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. All of the arm strength in the world won't help pitchers record an out if they're unbalanced in their delivery. Remind them to keep their back leg stabilized and their core activated. It will help them tap the cones here and send batters back to the dugout in the actual game. Pitchers practice on one leg so they can dominate on two. In this game we call the Flamingo. The first pitcher in line steps forward with a glove and a baseball. Place a chair or bucket behind them to rest their back leg on top of. You set up 30 feet away as the catcher. Here's how it looks. When they're ready, the pitcher rocks back, going through the second half of their delivery, but with their back leg on the chair, before delivering the ball to you as accurately as possible. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff so have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. Pitchers are so used to throwing on two legs that using only one will feel awkward. Remind them that this will help them develop more strength and control in the actual game. Rotating their hips properly will help them bring their throwing shoulder through the target, resulting in better accuracy and more velocity. Hey, great job! Aces perfect their mechanics without a ball in this game we call Towel Slap Pitching. The first pitcher climbs the mound with a towel wrapped around their throwing hand. You or another player stands about 10 feet in front of them. Extend your glove hand as a target as they come to their set position. Hands together and head turned towards their partner. On your call, they go through their windup as usual, lifting their front leg, striding forward, and separating their hands so their arms form a T. But once their arm reaches the proper release point, instead of throwing a ball, they snap their wrist and whip the towel straight down. They score a point every time the towel skims your glove, reinforcing the importance of developing a consistent release point. After 10 towel slaps, they go to the back of the line and the next pitcher is up. Arm strength will only get a pitcher so far. To dominate on the bump, they'll need to get their entire body involved. Using a towel lets them dial in on the delivery so it's endlessly repeatable. From now all the way up to the big leagues. Pitchers develop better balance and rhythm on the mound in this game we call Rock and Roll. The first pitcher in line climbs the mound with a baseball. You set up behind the plate as the catcher as they get into set position with hands together and legs spread apart to the length of their stride. Here's how it looks. When they're ready, the pitcher rocks forward, bending their knee as they bring all their weight to their front leg. Then they shift it all to their back leg while separating their hands, glove arm up and throwing arm down. Next, they complete their delivery, turning their hips, 
driving their weight forward and throwing the ball towards home. After 10 pitches, the next player in line rotates in. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff, so have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. When it comes to eating innings, a balanced delivery is even more important than a strong arm. The more control they have in their legs, the less they'll overtax their arm while pitching. It's all about finding a form that is endlessly repeatable and delivers results, just like that. Pitchers perfect their delivery in this game we call the Scarecrow. The first pitcher in line climbs the hill with a baseball as you set up as catcher behind the plate. Here's how it looks. On your call, they make their way through the four steps of their delivery, isolating one element at a time. First, the pitcher comes to a split stance with their drive leg on the rubber and throwing arm up. From there, they should send the ball home, taking care to follow through, finishing over their front leg. Second, they begin with their back foot on the rubber, front foot extended, and hands together. From there, they stride and separate their arms into a T, or scarecrow position, before following through and throwing the ball. Third, the pitcher puts their weight on their back leg while lifting their front leg off the ground. They pause on one leg, lower it, tap the ground, and then lift it back up three times, before going through the first two setups and safely throwing the ball. In the fourth and final step, they put it all together, winding up and delivering the ball home, just like in the regular game. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff, so have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. Some players may struggle with control while using a disjointed delivery. Remind them to keep their heads steady and eyes locked on the target, just like this. Pitchers practice control within the strike zone in this game we call Right on Target. The first pitcher in line climbs the mound with a baseball. You set up behind the plate as the catcher. Here's how it looks. On your call, they begin delivering the ball to home plate. Have them throw 12 pitches, trying to hit different imaginary targets with each. First, they throw to each of the four corners, up and away, down and away, up and in, and down and in. Then they throw one right down Broadway, before finishing up with a pitch middle low. They should throw two pitches to each target in the strike zone before moving on to the next. Give them one point for every strike they throw on target and challenge them to beat their high score in the next round. If players are struggling to hit their spots, remind them to line their glove arm up with their target to steady their line of sight, helping to keep their head in place and their eyes locked in on the strike zone. Pitchers refine their accuracy and control in this game we call Knockout. Line up pitchers behind the mound and give the first player a ball. You stand behind home plate as the catcher. Here's how it looks. The first player climbs the mound and throws a pitch. Nice pitch, strike! If it's a strike, the pitcher is safe and goes to the back of the line. Oh, a little outside. Now this person got to throw a strike. You're still in it until they throw a strike. If it's a ball, they're on the hot seat and the next player is up to pitch. They can knock the previous player out by throwing a strike. But if they throw a ball, the first player is safe and suddenly they're the one on the hot seat. The game continues until only one ace remains atop the mound. Good pitching is about more than throwing hard. Knockout shows players that whether they're playing Little League or in the majors, painting the corner can be just as effective as a blazing fastball. Oh boy. Pitchers refine their accuracy and sharpen their control in this classic called the bullpen. The first pitcher steps up on the mound with a ball, as you or another player sets up behind home as catcher. Here's how it looks. When they're ready, the pitcher winds up and smoothly delivers the baseball to home plate. They should throw each of the pitches they'll use in the actual game multiple times, ramping up their velocity with each rep. Start off with fastballs. Next come change-ups, so they can get comfortable using a different grip. The bullpen is also a great chance to develop control within the strike zone. Challenge players to throw pitches to each of the four corners of the zone, up and away, down and away, 
up and in, and down and in. After 20 pitches, the next pitcher rotates in. Players love to compete, and some healthy competition between pitchers can elevate the whole staff, so have them keep track of and compare how many strikes they throw. Most of your aces will prefer practicing the pitches they're already good at. After all, it's more fun when you're reliably throwing heat. Remind them that this is their chance to smooth out any bumps in their delivery without the pressure of a batter at the plate. That's the best way to make sure they're comfortable throwing every pitch in their arsenal.